Time to wake up, Stomper. You get to go in the garage now. We're not giving up on you. All right, well, I got Alex and Hubert's projects coming over here soon to help me get this thing in the garage. Uh, I gave everything just kind of a quick once over to make sure I don't do something like this. I kind of thought all the brake fluid in the way when I start it. Anyway, so I'm looking it over. This ground is about out. This ground is doing nothing. So we gotta do some electrical work on this thing because this is all, all sorts of not right. So, looks like this core support's all bent up in the front. I think we figured that out before, but either way, I'm gonna focus on the electrical stuff and get the timing dealt with. Um, anyway, let's just see if this thing even wants to come to life right now. One of my keys works on this car, I remember. Boy, it does smell like an old Toyota in here. This one right here. I hear a fuel pump working, so I know that's probably not in there, right? I got nothing. What are all these doing? So that turns the fuel pump on. That sounds healthy. Oh, too soon, Junior. I think the connection just died too when I did that. It did. Oh! Away there, YouTube. As you can tell, Stomper is finally in the garage. Whew. It's only been like four months, I think, since we dragged her home. Yeah, well, life kind of gets busy sometimes. But this is the 84 SR5. Uh, this is actually one of the earliest Tercel wagons that kind of came into my life uh, shortly after I got spud over here. Um, I don't remember the exact day we got this car, but it's been quite a, quite a while. And it got sold. Um, Traded hands several times and it got absolutely butchered between then and now. We're going to go ahead and try to start sorting some of the little small things out right now. And uh, we'll see what we can make happen today. So as you guys probably saw with me flipping toggle switches and stuff like that, there's a mess of electrical issues going on with this thing. I don't really know what all's going on. The grounds are crap. Battery's really not holding the charge, which I'm guessing is probably related due to the fact that none of this stuff is right. So we're going to go ahead and try to get this stuff figured out. I'm going to start off with... Fixing the ground, rewiring all the fans and stuff like that. Probably gonna change this fan because this this is really loose. Might change this little core support out if I can. Try to straighten this out a little bit and get rid of these hood engines and put a hood latch on it again. But we'll kind of figure that part out later. That's not really a huge rush right now. Um, the first thing I need to do is get it running and idling normally. I'm pretty sure the timing's off. Somebody did the head gasket or so we were told. And they also fill it with stop leak. So I'm probably gonna pull the cylinder head off this thing and go through that. But that's, again, a little later on down the road. For now, I'm going to get the timing dialed then straight, see if I can get it running properly, and then uh, get some electrical issues figured out, and then get the brakes working. And then from there, we'll kind of dig in a little bit deeper and figure out what else we'll do later. I guess start with this ground wire, because this is really bad. All right. This thing is all the way hooked up to not a lot. And out comes the horribly not connected properly ground. So ground is freshly rehooked up. I'm going to go ahead and throw the battery in it right now, and we're going to start monkeying around with some of the other electrical crap that's going on. For some reason, this headlight is completely disconnected. I don't know even where the harness is to the headlight. It's just gone. So that's fun. Actually, it might be underneath this battery tray. And there's it on the other side of this battery tray. Oh, this, this, what the, the headlight's not even connected. Dude, what is even happening? Is this connected? 
So somebody took, bro, broke the bolts to put this headlight in. Dude, I don't really know what that is or why they did that. I do not understand this. We're gonna connect it for fun. We'll just leave it be loose for now. And then we'll figure that out in a little bit. For now, battery's gonna go back in. Okay, so the battery connected and now I'm going to figure out what's going on with this fan For some reason they had the fan run into a toggle switch instead of down here to the factory switch I'm kind of confused as to why um, Maybe the factory fan sensor is dead and wasn't reading it letting it get hot enough or maybe they wanted it to read They wanted it to stay cooler. I don't really know or understand maybe They were annoyed with it cutting on and off, but we're gonna connect this back up here and do some testing Okay, so now that that is reconnected, I'm going to hop up here and I'm going to pull this connector out. So if you guys ever want your fan to run full time for any reason whatsoever, just go ahead and pop this off. <clears throat> it's just that easy, right? There we go. Go ahead and just pop this sensor off right here, kind of run it out of the way so it doesn't hit anything. Now I'm going to go in the car. So if the fan is running constantly, I should hear it come on as soon as this key gets turned over. Well, that's a pretty good indication that it's likely working. We will reconnect this. Now it cut back off. That is not a guarantee that this sensor down there is not bad for some reason, but I personally have never seen one bad. So, we're going to go ahead and assume this part is good, and I'll make sure I watch my temp gauge the first time I take it for a rip. So, fingers crossed everything goes okay on that. We'll figure that out later. Stay tuned. It might ensue chaos. I'm not sure yet. Now, I'm going to go through and rip all this wiring out from inside of the dash. Whatever's going on doesn't need to happen. We can rewire it properly and better. So, we're going to do that right now. So, inside of here... Oh, these doors are a little bit sticky. We gotta spray someone else with some croil. <sighs> There's a toggle switch setup going on in here for a bunch of stuff. I don't really understand or know why they did this. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. Pull that out, pull that out, pull that out. These are all coming out. You are done, you are done, you are done. This is the one for the fan. That needs to come out of here. Goodbye. This is for the electric choke. I think they had the electric choke and the fuel pump ran on the same one. I don't really know. Goodbye. You're out of there. That's the one that runs with the battery, isn't it? Yes, it is. You. Goodbye. And this one right here, what do you run to? Runs into the car. Oh, that's the toggle switch for the radio I think Alex ran. <sighs> I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. We're going to disconnect it anyway, though. The choke is going to get wired up in top of here. This is a 12-volt keyed circuit. So it's going to go right in the top part of this. This is for the... Something for the emissions, quite obviously. But it works as a great 12-volt source for chokes if you have a Weber carburetor, in my personal opinion. Even though I'm becoming one of those guys that's not a huge fan of Webers. They're super simple, and that's nice. But they're just glorified motorcycle carbs. They're really not that great. Okay. One of these is going to be 12 volts for a fuel pump. Maybe this is actually what they've got for the fuel pump right here. That's actually probably what this is. Let's plug this into my memory serves. It is this one right on the outside right there that is 12 volts when it's keyed. If my memory serves. Verifying with spud. Boy, that connector shouldn't be open like that, but here we are. Yep, it is the one that is to the right. And that's what we got. So we're good there. So that should be rel relatively wired normal-ish. 
We got LED dome lightage. Fuel pump's going in. Battery's still dead. Okay, so that's good news. Yeah, I think that's the toggle switch for the radio that Alex rigged up. So, I need to clean this interior out. I don't even drink in those Bud Light bottles in my freaking car. Gross. So, that gets the choke and the fuel pump wired up to where I like them anyway. Um, I'm going to come back a little later and actually take a splice in a connector and put connectors over that. The same with Spud because that's not, I shouldn't be doing that. So now that we got that taken care of, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to try to set the timing in this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and pull cylinder number one spark plug out. I'm going to make sure it's at top dead center. I'm going to make sure the opening of this is facing right up about there. It's all set right, then I know the belt's on properly, and then I'll reset the distributor and make sure that's all in line. So let's go take care of that first. We'll see what happens. Oof, she has been running rich. All right, I don't know how you can see this, but I got the timing set to right at about zero degrees, give or take like the tiniest centimeter. For the factory service manual, this should be a little hole right there with a little notch, with that at zero. And that's how we know we're in time. Hmm, yeah, we're off. We're off uh, like a tooth at least, maybe two. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen this tensioner up, jump this belt back. All right, got that tensioner retightened up way off. So that'll give us time to move this belt around without it being under tension. Looks a little better. That looks a lot better. Okay, so now that we got the belt all in place, we're gonna go ahead and check the distributor timing, make sure that's correct. Okay, so oop, out comes this. So, part of the factory service manual, you want to match the pin with a little protrusion in the distributor. Now, I myself have definitely made a mistake of lining the little dimples with little dimples together, or protrusions as they call them, uh, thinking that would be correct, but it is not. So, we're going to go ahead and do that to this right now. I think it was actually on, but I'm going to go ahead and try to slip it in place and hope we get it relatively straight. This isn't going to be the easiest thing for me to film. So forgive me, but I'm going to maybe try a couple angles. Okay. So I got the brake booster in the way, so it's kind of hard for me to get this on camera, but I got the pin with the protrusion lined up right there. You would think it would look like it would go that to that, but it's actually going to be that to that. So fingers crossed I don't get this out of time when I go to light it in. This is actually never quite very easy. Let me get that lined up with about that right there. 
Oop, it's rolling a little bit. I think this distributor shaft's kind of wore out. Okay. Let's see if we did that right. So if I pump the throttle a lot, she'll run. She tends to die. She's really not wanting to idle very well. Well, instead of boring you guys to death with hours of me just tinkering around with little stuff and trying to figure out exactly what was going on, I'll quick give you the Spark Notes version. So, I got it running pretty decent, but there was tons of just issues. It wasn't idling very well. Uh, the fuel pressure regulator was basically put all the way in. I checked the pressure and I was getting six, well, like 6.2 PSI, which is way too much. These Weber's only really need like two and a half or less. So I got it back down to about two. Tons of the intake and exhaust manifold bolts were loose. Tons of the car base plate gaskets were loose. Each of these car bolts was about a quarter to a half a turn loose. All eight of them. I got every single one to turn. Um, some of these were like over two turns loose. It was really, really, really bad. So I got the uh, timing set to about um, maybe 13 degrees right now, 12 degrees, somewhere in there. So she's pretty happy, pretty healthy. Vacuum advance is working. I'm pretty ha happy for that. And, uh, well... She ain't running too bad. I'll give you a little clip right now of her running. All right, well, here's where we're at right now. She sounds so much nicer. Still gotta tweak the idle on it and change a bunch of LEDs because this is all off and buff this lens because it's really bad, but it's not sounding too bad. A little snappy. This thing does have a ported head. So that's going to probably do it for me for today. Next time we'll do the brakes. I think after that we'll probably do a good interior clean because I really like a good interior. Then after that, on the third video of this thing, we'll probably do some exterior stuff. Fix that loose headlight bucket, air some tires up. Um, a couple of little things. The, there's a set of fog lights that are wired to be on all the time. I want to change those to only be on with high beams. So we'll take care of that. Um, We'll see what happens as we kind of go further. I think so far we're on the right track. We're still got a long ways to go before she's roadworthy again. Probably got to do the head gasket on it because somebody poured stop leak in it. So the block's probably filled with crap. I also need to see if I can't figure out how to get heat in this old girl. We tried a lot of stuff a couple years ago. Um, I've learned a lot about these cars since then, but I'm not 100% confident I'm going to be able to figure it out. But we'll figure that out as the videos come. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later. Adios.